Hello and welcome to the third and last video looking at Eldar in Battlefleet Gothic Armada. So in this video, we're going to cover off from some basic strategy and tactics. So, if you've already watched the other two Eldar videos, you'll know that I am pretty much all for the Ordnance. And that is how I recommend to set it up. Saying that, if you want to go Torps, go Torps. But El Eldar are very, 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 very high on the micromanagement list. They require lots of it. And just as fair warning going into this battle, I am not a particularly good micromanager. So you're not going to necessarily see the best Eldar gameplay out there when I am controlling them. But I do my best. So there are essentially two ways of doing this. You can kite with them because they are so much faster than everything else. So essentially you just start kiting around the battlefield, throwing out your ordnance whenever they're ready to go, and trust me, they will eventually blow up the enemy ships. Now, depending on how the battlefield's set out, this can be easier said than done at times, uh, essentially avoiding things like uh, asteroid fields and the immovable objects. Obviously, there are ways of negating the asteroid fields if you want through upgrades. So if you are going to run this tactic, obviously take that upgrade as it's going to increase your maneuverability and potentially force the enemy to go through the asteroid fields without that upgrade, which is helpful to you as well. Now, in saying that, as much as that sounds like a good idea because Eldar fast, fragile, which means essentially not getting hit because you're constantly ahead of the enemy is good they actually do do a lot of damage with their standard weapons the star cannons the pulsars when you can get them on target so i really really feel like you're missing out on a lot by kiting and it's just going to extend the battle by quite a large amount but whatever you find easier. Realistically, I should probably kite as it's obviously slightly less micromanagement intensive, but hey, I like to try and get maximum damage. What can I say? Now, obviously, if you're going to run torps, it's going to be even more micro intensive because you are going to have to try your best to keep your front pointed towards the enemy as best you can to get those torps off. But your pulsars will probably become slightly more effective as well because of that. So yeah, now the one thing is always run your deflecting hollow field because it reduces that fragile to 50% instead of 100. Efficient pilots if you are running ordnance because more ordnance more often is better. And I pretty much run the rotation speed upgrade as well on everything because hell, why wouldn't I want to be turning quicker as Eldar. I need to keep that front facing forward as much as possible. So you see that that's fairly standard across all my ships. So let's go into a battle. Let's see what I get. So breakthrough defender against space marines. So I actually don't mind this. This is actually a fairly good one for Eldar because essentially, even if they do manage to take out all of your uh, defense stations, they're going to be running. You're both quicker than them and like the idea of them running in a straight line so you can sit behind them and shoot them. So because I like to essentially try and take as few ships as possible, because it makes the micro wing that much easier. That's how I run it. Now, I could run the second battle cruiser. Actually, you know what? Screw it. We're going to run the second battle cruiser this time around. Usually, I like running the cruiser as opposed to the battle cruiser. Uh, you'll see that there is a slight difference in setup. That the cruiser does get me that, but with breakthrough, I really shouldn't need that. So, we'll actually run the second battle cruiser. The auger disruptor is just useful. I 
Okay. So, first thing we want to do with a breakthrough is set up our defense platforms. Just because who wants to be microing these, regardless of what race you're playing, they can just look after themselves. I mostly just care about getting these out there. So, you always want Eldar moving, so make sure you're always setting them up to move. There we go. Uh, that should cover us off fairly well and allow us to help each other if needed. Normally I'd manually do that with breakthrough because you start that little bit closer on. I'm just going to do this automatically. I'm going to keep him going forward anyhow because there's a chance there's a ship's in there. Now, the thing with Eldar is they automatically have this turned on, the toggle focusing target. So, essentially I can give it a move order and I'll tell it the target. It'll still go to wherever I've told it to move and then it will switch to the target. Saves you shift clicking which you would probably be doing a lot of with Eldar. Now, I realistically want to be facing towards him, so we'll do that. Let everything else just play out. This guy's the same. Uh, just to the side, I don't want to be running into him. Okay, so what do we got? For now, we'll just try and take out their shields as I'm faster than them anyhow. Yes, I told you there'd be a ship over here somewhere. There we go. The I probably want to do that. Yes, now, this is where you're going to get to see just how powerful these are. So we're actually just going to do that. They shouldn't be hitting me enough for me to be overly concerned. This one's a little bit different. He's going to have a ship coming in behind him. Which we might just put it a little bit past him. Do that, do that. And <clears throat> there we go, there's Vol's maneuver, always nice. Yeah, no, I missed it. That's alright. Yes, we'll actually just give him a little bit of a shift. There we go. So you'll see here that little bit of tracking from the Stycans I mentioned in a previous video as it curves towards them. All right. He's burnt, that's fine. That's already blown up. That's from Ordnance and maybe a couple of hits from this stuff. That's what I love about this. See how this guy's going over here. Right, that's him done. There you get that ordinance happening. Uh, that's annoying. Actually, wait. There we go, get that hollow field back up as quickly as possible. Yeah, 
Right, that's pretty much gone. Somehow that guy's ended up behind, but hey. You can see just how much microwing you potentially have. Right, he's done his end, so he can come over here and deal with him. Right, so he's not long for this world, and he's actually already gone. And that's it, they can't actually make it out with what they have left, so I win. So, while it happened mostly off screen, unfortunately, one of those light cruisers were pretty much taken out by a single ordnance launch from that battleship, and a couple of hits from his weapons. If I was lucky, I got pulsars off on it. And as you can see, if you can get in behind a ship, those Eldar will sit there, they will follow. Now, it is a little bit easier with that particular game type because they divide up more. It's a little bit harder to do that when there's more of them and you've got the concern that because you're faster, you'll actually slow down to stay behind them. So you, it'll stay behind them, no issue. But because you'll have to stop and they'll... Uh, any other ships in the area will now potentially be shooting at you with no hollow fields. You'll die very quickly. So it's a bit easier in that one. Uh, but it is still very good if you can do it and you can get in behind and you can micro so that you're constantly clicking so that they are at least moving a little bit. This is the other reason why I do like running the hollow field overcharge because if it does do that, that'll kick in and... At least I'll get 10 seconds of it not being an issue. So yeah, that was probably Eldar at their best. Um, but as you saw, I, like even more so than uh, any other race, I really was having to keep an eye on all my ships, micro their movement a lot more, micro their targeting, just to do my best to keep it all going smoothly, hopefully. So yeah, that's Eldar. I hope you found this useful and join us again when I will be looking at the two expansion races, Space Marine and Tau.